Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. And on today's episode, I am going to be joined by Jeremy Dang. He is the Vice President of Business Development at Electrovia. And Electrovia is providing lithium-ion power solutions. And we're going to talk all about lithium-ion. We're going to talk about whether they're differentiators, where's the market stand right now as we're heading into 2024. And we're also going to talk a little bit about what's coming in the future for for lithium ion and for electrovia and we'll touch a little bit too on their partnership with our friends at the the raymond corporation as well so jeremy welcome to the show how are you i'm doing well kevin Uh, thank you for having me here today this is my first podcast by the way so i'm glad i'm doing it with you Oh, okay. All right. I'll go easy then. Okay. All right. (laughs) No problem. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Electrovia and kind of what it is that you guys do? Sure thing. So so Electrovia, we're a lithium ion battery company. Uh, We were founded in 1996. So we've been in this industry for 27 years. Uh, What's interesting about that though is, uh, you know, lithium ion batteries were only just commercialized 30 years ago. So we've been a company for almost the majority of this time. So we have developed a large wealth of knowledge, know how and expertise in this field. Currently, we develop battery packs for material handling applications, including AGVs and AMRs. But we're looking to also branch off to other applications where lithium ion makes sense and more specifically where the electro bio lithium ion batteries make the most sense. What makes our batteries very unique is has to do with its longevity as well as safety characteristics. Mm. Happy to talk more about that uh, further down. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, very interesting and obviously... You know, the I think the material handling industry is is kind of been going through uh, a little bit of a, a shift, um, and also maybe like a little bit more of a a question in a sense of like you know how is the energy and, and power um, source going to be looking in the years to come? And certainly, I think lithium is is one of the the big components of that, and and one of the probably one of the ones that's near the top of the list for, for options out there. So, I mean, why don't you tell us kind of in, as we're recording this now, going into November here at the end of 2023 and heading into 2024, I mean, where, where does lithium ion as a power solution stand overall within the material handling industry right now? And as we're looking into the next year. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. Maybe I'll start off with what the uh, landscape looked like back in 2016 slash 2017. Um, That's when I joined the company and uh, we didn't have a single customer at the moment, uh, but we just launched a forklift battery product. Mm -hmm. And at the time, uh, you know, the majority of the power sources were lead acid batteries. Uh, It was very uncommon to see lithium ion battery powering a lift truck, at least in North America. Mm -hmm. Year over year, uh, adoption rate increased. And then we just recently, you know, we were just at the trade show in Chicago at Promat. And what we saw that was that customers were no longer asking about the benefits of lithium, but more focused on, you know, when can we deliver lithium? Are your lithium iron batteries compatible with our fleets and so on? So it turns out the adoption rate is now at an all time high and I would expect it to increase. Uh, over time as well. So I, I'm seeing lithium-ion batteries as a common power source 
uh, for material handling applications. And uh, this will also make it a lot easier for other markets as well that would demand lithium-ion batteries. So I still think lead-acid batteries will still power lift trucks. Uh, but yeah. lithium-ion battery, there's going to be a greater proportion of it. And as the cost of lithium comes down, I can see more of that being in operations, even for the smaller one-shift operations. So that's where I see it going with lithium-ion batteries. Hmm. Interesting. And I, and I think that's an uh, interesting thing you, you touched on there at the end is because, I, I mean, I think what, I, what I've heard and in discussions I've had with people is that, you know, lithium starts to make more sense when, when you have multiple shifts in, in operation, right? So, so I, I mean, you, you mentioned there that, you know, you think that we're, we're heading towards an area where it'll, it'll make sense for operations that are even only one shift. So, so what, Talk to us a little bit about kind of what does that kind of, I guess, cross point or, or intersection look like where, you know, we can say that, okay, lithium just makes sense in in general, right? Not just for somebody that's running two or, or three shifts or around the clock type of operations. Yeah. So the easiest operation where lithium ion makes the most sense and where you see the greatest return on investment is going to be the multi-shift. Mm -hmm. heavy-duty users. So these are like the biggest, you know, blue chip Fortune 500 customers Right. that they, they basically run every single day, almost 24 hours a day, and they only shut down Thanksgiving and on Christmas. Mm -hmm. So with those clients, uh, we generally see a positive return on investment uh, very quickly within a year, uh, especially if they're doing uh, battery-changing practices on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Now, with the lighter duty guys who are doing one, maybe one and a half shift, and perhaps I'm in a weekend work, in some cases, lithium does make sense, particularly if you're doing a lot of uh, lifts, a lot of put aways and let downs. So those are common practices with the grocery guys. So that's where it makes a lot of sense there. But we're, what we're starting to see recently is even with the one shift operators, you can still see a payback with lithium. Mm. Uh, that's right. And so we're seeing at the store level, for example, where, where, you know, lift trucks are barely in use. So lithium does not make sense at first. But once you factor in other factors, such as the cost of quality and the cost of training your staff to maintain a battery, you realize you can get a positive return on investment. So what I mean by that is oftentimes at the store level, you can get a pretty high turnover rate with your employees. And if these are your employees that are maintaining your power sources, they may not be able to do it properly or at all. So what ends up happening is the uh, customer is forced to prematurely replace their lead acid batteries, right? Mm. Instead of a lead acid battery lasting, let's say, five years, it's now lasting a year or maybe a year and a half. So they're constantly having to repurchase those, these lead acid batteries. So by migrating to lithium where maintenance on them is pretty much minimal or none at all, mm. you can eliminate that completely. Interesting. Uh, second, yeah, and secondly, with tied to the turnover rate, if your staff is not properly trained, the chances of them getting injured while maintaining a battery could be uh, higher. Yeah. Sure. So if you move towards uh, lithium where you no longer have to maintain it or maintain it at a very minimal scale, you can also eliminate or mitigate that. So that's where um, you can see a positive return on investment at the store level where usage is quite low with uh, the, the lift trucks. Mm. Very interesting. And I, and I think too, I mean, as you look at your time, you, you mentioned you started in 2006, 2017. So, you know, now going on five, six years here, working in the, the lithium space, I mean, how have you seen kind of the maybe, uh, and you said too at the time there was no material handling customers yet, right? Like it was very new to the market. So, I mean, as you've gotten the customers, talk to us a little bit about maybe some of the initial skepticism that potential customers had versus like what now you're seeing is is the reality for them as they've decided to to move towards lithium. Yeah, for sure. So 2016, 2017, most most of our customers, or nearly all of them, did question lithium. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a new technology. And even in 2023, many will call lithium still a fairly new technology. Yeah. So a lot of the uh, companies may not be ready to go lithium just yet, just because of the uncertainty. 
So oftentimes what we did back in 2016, 2017 was offer demo trials. So with customer X can play around with their batteries in our chargers for a month or two, see how they like it. And typically if the experience goes well, that will result in a small seed order. And if that small seed order performs as expected, that's where you get a larger order and potentially the full site order. So that's oftentimes most of our orders back in 2017, 18, there were just seed orders, just uh, developing proof of concept with the end user. And a year or two after, after that, that's where we get the majority of the orders from the set customer. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And, and, and I mean, as the f- demos and, and like you said, you know, have uh, embraced the technology because they've seen these results. I mean, what kind of like long term now as it's been a couple of years, I mean, what kind of real long term benefits have they they seen and, and realized that maybe they didn't even think about in the, the beginning as they were considering this this option? Yeah, that's a good good question right there. So 2013 was a big year for Electrovia. For one, our oldest customer uh, just turned six years old. So our batteries are okay. our oldest batteries are now six years old in the field. And uh, it was with a company called Mondelez. So it's a Fortune 500 yeah. company, very big in confectionery items. And at the six-year mark, uh, they were surprised because back in 2017, we did promote the longevity of our cells, that it can last a very long time. For most heavy-duty operations, it's a 10-plus year life expectancy. Mm-hmm. But at the time, it was just theoretical. Uh, they weren't expecting it. So we were just there a month ago celebrating the six-year mark of Mondelez. And they're at the point where the batteries have uh, start to outlive the life expected truck. So once the new trucks arrive in, the batteries get moved into the new trucks. So oh, wow. uh, unlike lead-acid batteries where a lift truck will see multiple lead-acid batteries in its lifetime, you're seeing the total opposite. And lithium ion battery is going to be wow. seeing multiple lift trucks within its lifetime. That's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The fact that like you're you're switching out the truck before the battery is is toast. I mean, is is really pretty incredible. And I think a kind of a testament to that that longevity that you you mentioned. I mean, when when you look at something like that, I mean, how if someone you know, looks at lithium versus lead acid and, you know, they're looking at longevity like that. I mean, I mean, what's the realistic expectation of, of just how long that, that lithium could last? Uh, in terms of cycle count, lead acid batteries can last 1500 to 1800 cycles. So mm-hmm. you're doing one cycle a day, you're, that's a five year technology right there mm-hmm. with uh, the electrovial lithium ion batteries. On paper, we're warranting up to 9,000 cycles, so that right away that's six times longer. Mm. But what we found recently through a third-party test facility called uh, DNV Labs, the cells are projected to do up to 14,000 cycles. So oh, wow. Put that in number of years. If you're a two-shift operator, so you're doing two cycles a day, for example, this is going to be a 20-year product. Uh, you know, This is unheard of, and it's just going to last a very, long, very long time here. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty remarkable and pretty incredible. I mean, it's some, uh, <laughs> I mean, in some cases, like the battery is going to outlive the, uh, the <laughs> life of the, the business, I think in, in, in some <laughs> aspects. Right. So, yeah. I, I mean, it's pretty interesting. So, I, I mean, in that regard too, I mean, when you have something that lasts that long, you know, you do run into situations like that. So, I, I mean, I know there's been some discussion, I, I think, in, in general within the industry, too, about like the kind of the recyclability of lithium ion and, and what to do with that. I mean, if you have that type of situation, I mean, how do you guys kind of uh, address that or do you, are there programs that you uh, work with that, you know, help to to deal with that that issue if a battery does need to be disposed of. Yeah. Yeah. So we work with a number of recycling companies, but the one that stands out today is uh, Lifecycle. I'm sure you've heard of them. Mm-hmm. And they are uh, a partner of Raymond. So we you know uh, the Raymond Energy Central Battery line is the private label battery to me for Raymond. If any of those batteries require recycling, 
because it reaches it, it had reached its end of life, or perhaps there's a permanent damage to the battery that can no longer be repaired or recoverable, then they go straight to life cycle for the recovery. Mm. So we did have to date, we have about close to seven thousand batteries in the field. And I would say no more than 10 of them have been recycled. And oh, wow. those have been recycled because uh, they were caught up in a flood uh, from one of the hurricanes that uh-huh. happened in the U.S. Uh, actually, in your area a couple of years ago. Uh, oh, really? Okay. So it was submerged underwater for days. And uh, mm-hmm. because of a warranty uh, clause, it had to be uh, decommissioned and recycled. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's very interesting because, you know, you have that, that long life and, you know, it's just curious, like how, how it's going to go about or, or be taken care of. So it'd be interesting to, to see like, you know, how that continues to evolve. And I think the technology is constantly evolving. So, you know, with that being said, I mean, there's, there's certainly, you know, multiple players out there in the industry that are offering lithium as well. So why don't you tell us kind of, you know, I mean, obviously we we talked about the longevity here a little bit, but tell us, I mean, kind of from your view, like what are some of the the differentiators about Electrovia versus, you know, some of the competition and, you know, if I'm looking at batteries, like why, what is the difference when it comes to, to lithium? Like what's, you know, lithium A versus lithium B, right? Does it really make a difference or is all the same product with a different label? What makes it different if, if I'm coming from Electrovia? Yep, that's a good point. And we get that question all the time, especially when you go to a trade show. You'll yeah. if you go to a trade show in 2023, you'll maybe count 40 to 50 lithium ion battery companies. Whereas in 2017, at the very first trade show I went to, there was no more than four or five. So yeah. It's growing exponentially, but you're right. It's very difficult to distinguish one battery from one company and a battery from another company, right? Uh, in most cases, you most of the uh, lithium-ion battery players will buy a battery from Asia and then repackage it mm-hmm. with their own branding, of course. But what makes Electrobio unique here is the, the cell technology, right? So it is our design. It is our IP around the cell. So we control the design and the functionality of the cells. Mm-hmm. And a cell that we provide today can do up to 14,000 cycles. Yeah. And it is also very uh, thermally stable. So most lithium-ion batteries can handle uh, heat up to, let's say, 100 degrees Celsius okay. before uh, the separated material in the cell will begin to uh, deform. And that is the initial stages of what you'll, what we call thermal runaway reaction, right? Mm. So when the separators degrades and shrinks, your positive and your negative terminal will now be in electrical contact with one another. Would, and this will cause uh, heating of the cell and eventually to your thermal runaway. Now, with the electrobi lithium ion battery cells, we use a ceramic-based separator. And what that does is it grants the cell uh, thermal stability above 200 degrees Celsius. So Mm. it's very difficult to deform our membrane. Thereby, it's very difficult to force our battery to catch on fire. We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Interesting. Okay. So from a, like a safety perspective, then that's a, a big deal. Yeah. 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 So those are two major characteristics that set us apart longevity and safety, thermal stability. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very interesting because I mean, I had a, a thermal issue with the battery on my cell phone actually, which is 
lithium, right? I mean, it, it swelled up and the screen <laughs> screen popped off actually. So, I mean, okay. yeah, very, very important to, to know that. And obviously you know, on a bigger scale could be a, a potentially very dangerous, dangerous issue. Right. So, so it's great to, to hear that and, and be able to, to know that as well. And that there's a, a difference there in, in the different types and, and things that you should be looking out for. So now Electrovia has, and you, and you kind of mentioned in there, a partnership with Raymond Forklifts, right, and material handling. So tell us a little bit about, about that partnership and, you know, what can somebody expect with getting a, a Raymond sh- machine that's outfitted with the Electrovia battery? Yeah. So the Raymond partnerships started in uh, 2018. So it started mostly with your engineering group, testing our batteries in the laboratory. And it wasn't until December 2020 when Energy Centrals was born. So that's the marketing label behind the Raymond branded batteries, Raymond Energy Centrals. So it's been almost a three-year program now. It's been very successful. We've seen the demand for Energy Central grow year over year. Because the Raymond Energy Central uses the Electrovia ceramic base battery technology, the Raymond Energy Centrals are characterized with the longest lifetime as well as safety characteristics. So mm-hmm. these are going to be batteries that last a very, very long time and are going to offer the best safety performance. So with the Raymond Energy Centrals, battery data gets transmitted from our battery to the lift truck. So mm-hmm. anything but the, the battery, the current voltage, the odometer reading, <laughs> Uh, it's all transmitted to the Raymond truck. So it's a fully integrated system mechanically and software wise. So if you are a customer with the Raymond fleet, you know, buying into the energy essential program will be able to grant you that information, that battery data. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. And, and that data is definitely critical and, you know, understanding like your actual consumption and, and how to better utilize your fleet. So, so very interesting and, and definitely great stuff there. And, you know, we always like to shout out our friends at, at Raymond, definitely. Uh, <laughs> so very interesting stuff with you. And, you know, obviously, you know, lithium continues to, to grow within the space. And I think the technology continues to advance. And, and I think, you know, a testament today, as we discussed, I mean, it's just the longevity of that technology potential. I mean, you know, having, you know, it last up to, to 20 years potentially is a huge thing, right? And something that, you know, you don't necessarily have to think about every couple of years and, you know, planning in expenses and planning in CapEx spend on, you know, getting new batteries and things like that. And, you know, don't have to worry as much uh, with the, the maintenance free or, or virtually no maintenance with that technology. So a, as the lithium market continues to, to grow and technology continues to, to evolve, tell us a little bit about kind of what's What's coming next within the lithium industry or within uh, Electrovia itself? Like, what can we look forward to in the in the future? Yeah, yeah. Uh, before I answer that, I just want sure. to go back to what you were saying about the CapEx and the oh, sure. uh, yeah. longevity of our batteries. You know, because we know the batteries can last a very long time, we're starting to increase the residual value of our batteries, right? Yeah. So for customers that are looking to, like, lease a product now, they can now lease it at a very favorable monthly rate because the residual value is quite high on these products. So if you are even a one shift operator, one half shift operator, and you're on a board of whether lithium makes sense, I think the leasing option here could be very favorable in your operation. Mm. So this is something we are, we've been pushing the message out recently, and we see that growing significantly in the coming year. Mm. We know that there's a, a large market for leasing and this is something that you want to jump into. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, in that sense, you're you're leasing the, the battery is what you're leasing? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And at the end of the term, they, it can be released again or it can be added to our loaner demo rental fleet. There's so many different fates for these batteries since they last a very, very long time. Interesting. So do you, I mean... Do you see, I mean, you said it's fairly, fairly new program, right? So, I mean, do you see like during this kind of peak season or do you anticipate in future peak seasons that like there will be higher demand to, to lease out more batteries as maybe companies kind of ramp up with equipment for like a couple months and then kind of ramp down? Is, is that kind of the, the idea there? 
for the peak season, we're seeing more rental requests rather than leasing. So mm. we, we understand for such yeah. an e-commerce guy, the last quarter of the year is the busiest time of the year. And that's where okay. we get the most uh, requests for additional equipment to add to your fleet for three to six months. Mm. Uh, that, that's a separate program. But yes, that's something that we're also supporting. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting to know. Definitely a good tidbit there, especially as we're talking right now in just the kind of beginning of peak season for, for a lot of people here. So, so, and now tell us, you know, kind of what's, what's the future look like? The future. Yes. Yeah. So I, I mentioned earlier that the Falcon program started in 2017. Our partnership with Raymond started in uh, uh, 2020 and year over year, our business has grown. Uh, quite significantly, especially in the last two years. Uh, so, so we re- recently disclosed that our revenue increased by 100% since last year. And last year was a 100% increase from the year before that. So uh, this material handling business here has been very successful to us. And we're now starting to look into other applications where lithium makes sense. So high voltage batteries is something that we just launched back in July of this year. And where we see this going into is for energy storage, construction vehicles, delivery vans, and, you know, electric buses, such as public mm-hmm. transit buses. In many of these applications, the duty cycle is so high. And going lithium here uh, makes the most sense for the runtime, the longevity of the cells, and for being able to do the uh profile that these vehicles undergo. So mm-hmm. we know construction vehicles, some that can do up to close to... Uh, six cycles a day. So this is where our batteries uh, and its longevity makes the most sense, right? So you can put a proper battery into those vehicle and know that it will last a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's interesting to see kind of the continued use cases where, you know, lithium can come into play and, and also these different power solutions to, to make things, you know, more, more robust or, or more sustainable, whatever the case may be. Um, but the technology continues to evolve and it's interesting to, to keep following it and, and see how it continues to, to grow and, and expand throughout. So we'll definitely be looking out for the, the expansion uh, of Electrovia solutions as well to see uh, kind of how things continue to to grow and get adopted into the market. So very interesting to talk to you today, Jeremy, and, and learn all about this stuff and learn about what Electrovia is doing. So thanks for, for sharing with us. If people are interested in learning more about Electrovia, what's the best way to do that? Uh, they can reach out to info at Electrovia.com. Uh, myself or my colleague will receive those emails and be happy to address those inquiries. All right, great. And we'll definitely put that information at the newwarehouse.com as well so people can find it easily. So, Jeremy, thank you once again for your time on the show today. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the new warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.